Hello, everybody. Welcome to Brace for Impact. This is our Rebellion uh, preview show. I am your host, Mike Gilbert. I'm here joined, as always, by my co-host, JD, by God, Oliva. How are you doing, JD? By God, I'm doing quite well still. All right, man. Well, I, hey, I'm really excited about this preview show, and I'm excited about Rebellion on Sunday. You know, we've been doing the show together for a month on the Fight Game Patreon uh, website, and I, I'm really excited about us doing a show exclusive for uh, YouTube, trying to get those subscribers up. Yeah, I, I'm really loving this. I can't remember ever being this excited about an Impact pay-per-view. So we are literally in a, probably the best time to really start getting into Impact. I mean, there hasn't been this much attention on the product in years, and uh, mm. it's it's pretty good. This is the last two episodes of Impact have been, I think, the best episodes of Impact in a couple years, to be honest with you. So I'm I'm really excited about this whole thing. Yeah, man, me too. Uh, there is a ton of buzz for this show. There's, I, I've had people just in my DMs and on Facebook and on Twitter telling me they haven't watched an Impact pay-per-view in a very long time, and they're buying this one. It's a lot of AEW fans. It's a lot of disaffected Impact fans, to be honest with you. A lot of fans from the old TNA days that are like, hey, what, these guys are still around. They're doing some cool things, and uh, and we're able to watch the show now. We're excited about the pay-per-view, and I, I am personally excited so let's go ahead and get into the main event. Um, we got Kenny Omega, the AEW World Heavyweight Champion, taking on the Impact World Heavyweight Champion, Rich Swan, and it's going to be title for title. You know what? What are, what are you thinking of this match? I I cannot remember being this excited about an Impact main event probably since like Joe Angle. To be honest with yeah. you, like this is when this when this first was, looked like it was going to be a thing. I was like, oh, this should be a fun match. I'm looking forward to it. You know, Kenny, Rich Swan, this should be good. Over the last two weeks specifically, Impact has done such an unbelievable job of promoting this fight. That's what it feels like. It feels mm -hmm. like we're going to watch a fight. Like, bringing in Mauro Ronaldo, the, the, the hype package, I think I saw three or four of them, have just been like, top-notch. Like, they've been so good. We talk about, it gets thrown around, this, this sports element in pro wrestling, bringing that back. No one has done a better job the last two weeks of bringing the sports in the sports presentation back to wrestling than impact, right? No, like this, the yeah. stuff they've been doing has been great. I, I, I can't express how excited I am for this match. Yeah, man. No, I, I'm super pumped too. I, I, I think it's going to be one of the, the best uh, in ring matches that impacts had in a very, very long time. It's the most well built um, main event that impacts had, I believe since lockdown 2008 with uh, Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle. It's almost like they watched that recently and they use that as the model of how to build a match. And it makes sense because that is the most commercially successful match in the history of, of Impact. And that was before the Hogan Bischoff era. That was before, you know, prime time on Spike TV. That's before they had just tons of, you know, uh, Hall of Fame talent on the roster. Um, the, they, that, that was a super, super huge show. And I think this is going to be um, the biggest show in, in about a decade as far as commercial success. And we'll, we'll get into some of that later. So uh, let's go ahead and get into predictions, man. You know, who, who do you think is going to win this match? Is, is there an obvious winner? Is there anything that could change your mind? I'm going to go with Kenny Omega via chicanery. Like the two referees thing. I know Tony Khan said we're going to have a winner. I believe that. Um, I don't believe Impact is going to make Rich Swan look bad. I really think that uh, having these multiple referees is going to factor in somehow. We're going to have a, uh, I don't want to say disputed finish, but um, a bizarre finish, I think, where I think that Kenny Omega, it's going to be the AEW. My prediction is Aubrey Edwards. Somehow it's some weirdness, but that she winds up making the decision to put the belt on Kenny. Yeah, so I, I completely disagree, okay. which, which is good for radio and which is good for TV. I, I think it's going to be a clean finish, one, two, three, Kenny Omega in the middle of the ring, and I think it's going to be an excellent match. So the, what, one of the things that Impact does well, and they've been doing it since um, since Don Callis has got to more of taken over, um, in their main events, they really don't do screw jobs. They, they don't do tons of interference. They, they haven't done anything like that. I think they've only done that once in one main event. I think it was in 2019 at Homecoming where they had a slight interference with uh, John Morrison and Brian Cage. And other than that, it's it's been clean finishes and um, you know clear winners every single time. I, I think that that's what we get to see here. Does that mean that the, the Good Brothers might come down to the ring and be stopped or, or something like that? I think that could happen. I think maybe possibly we get a, a Young Bucks appearance or something like that. But for, for the most part, I, I 
completely see that this is going to be a clean finish and it's going to be Kenny Omega looking strong in the main event, and he's going to be on impact just about every week, every couple of weeks going forward. I hope I'm wrong. Um, and I believe it or not, I actually have more faith in impact in this than I do AEW. Like I, it, we've seen a trend lately in dynamite where there've been way too much distraction stuff. So mm-hmm. I don't know. And be, because this is so complicated and political, I don't really know how this is going to be booked. I hope, I hope that it's what you say. I don't think we're going to see a lot of AEW people on this show. I think you'll see Kenny and the good brothers and that's it. Like, I don't think we'll get the young bucks. I don't, if someone was telling me, Oh, I bet Moxley and them and, and Eddie Kingston show mm-hmm. up. I don't, I don't think you're going to see that. I think no. it's going to be a straight impact show and I hope it's clean. I hope it's as clean as possible. I just, um, I don't know. Expect if I, if my expectations are low, I tend to be happy. And I said, I was really mm-hmm. excited, but if I expect a crappy finish, I'll be happy. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, no, I, so I, you know, AEW, uh, they they were kind of the, the ones that were setting the bar with not having crappy finishes on their pay per view, and then their last pay per view, uh, Kenny Omega beat John Moxley with help from the Good Brothers. I, I'm not going to get into the the explosion thing, but you know, before that, they had a kind of an uh, indecisive finish where there was an interference that led to the pinfall. So yeah. um, I. And that didn't go over very well. And I think that Tony Khan and Scott Demore, they've been making it pretty clear that there's going to be a decisive uh, victor in this. They don't want any shenanigans because of the past history with um, company versus company matches in these situations. I, I think they've learned from that history. And Impact really doesn't have anything to lose here. Uh, I no. they, they really don't. I, I think if Kenny wins clean in the middle, one, two, three, I, I, I think they – gain everything from that and i think aew gains everything from that if they beat if they beat kenny omega then they still gain because then rich swan looks good and they still have they have a strong champion rich swan goes to dynamite i I don't see that happening um the only way i could see them losing here is is if they go tna on it if they if they pull some tna stuff right tna lol stuff like they would have in the past where you know jeff jarrett's in the main event there's 50 run-ins there's seven bumps and stuff like that if they go that route then they're going to lose the audience that they just gained so i I think they're gonna go big on this one i think you're right but i think the specter of tna always looms over this promotion right it's always like you feel like okay what can go wrong right and it's like it's one of those things like you know uh you've been bit by a dog enough times you start flinching when going near animals you know, and I think that I hope, like I said, that's where my instinct went is immediately went to, well, I'm excited about this. So that means something's probably going to go wrong. So you just, you, you can't help it after a while. That being said, this should be great. They're going to, they have nothing to lose, right? Mm-hmm. If you have Kenny Omega holding both of those titles, cause again, there's two belts now and you put them on impact or on a, uh, but dynamite, which is now averaging a million viewers a week. That's great exposure for your product. You have Kenny Omega, who's one of the top two non WWE stars in the world right now. Right. You, you go. There's nothing you can do wrong. Like this, this whole thing is working out really well. I know people nitpick. Well, it should be more of this. It should be more of that. But I mean, like you're always going to get that. It's a political situation. I think they've handled it with the exception of um, I would have liked to have seen Swan on Dynamite this week. Yeah. But we're not seeing a lot of, you know, Dynamite people on uh, on a W on, uh, Imp- on Impact either. So, I mean, it's not like there's a ton of crossover. It's pretty much just been Omega and the Good Brothers. And at least it's been consistent on both shows. Yeah, and like you said, I think they, they exist in two separate universes. The, mm-hmm. the the difficulty is, and where the nitpicking comes in, is that you know Rich Swan is challenging for the AEW championship now. Mm-hmm. And if he wins in storyline, he could go to Dynamite, and he would be the face of the company for AEW if, if he were to win. Um, and by them not even interviewing the guy or having some type of altercation – it makes it seem like they're not taking it very seriously. Now, to, to AEW's credit, and they do deserve some credit, they they um, they did have a Impact ad. They had an ad for Rebellion on the show this past week, and they uh, also uh, Don Callis had kind of a throwaway line bringing up that uh, Kenny Omega was going to take on Rich Swan this Sunday. So they did mention it, but you know it would have been cool to see Rich Swan on the show. It would have. Part of me wonders how much of it is TNT not wanting another another program promoted on their program. I don't know. Like I said, there's a lot. There's so much political factor that goes into like a real relationship like this that I imagine there's a lot of red tape and a lot of like having it balance on like a razor's edge basically because you can't you don't want to screw this up and yeah. we're really in this era of pro wrestling we're really in uncharted territory like you know what I'm saying like it's different mm-hmm. so. yeah no yeah I totally get it but hey we we agree on the winner we we disagree how we're gonna get there and uh, I hope I'm right and I hope you're wrong. <laughs>
<laughs> Me too. Yeah. So our next match is uh, the co well, which I think is the co-main event is going to be the Impact Tag Team Champions uh, Finn Juice from New Japan Pro Wrestling taking on the Good Brothers. Uh, how do you see this one playing out? Good Brothers are getting the belts back. Yep. In a good match. It was a good match last mm -hmm. time they wrestled. Um, I think Finn Juice have helped elevate those tag titles and have helped out when they haven't had a lot of other tag teams going on in Impact. And I, but I think it's time to bring them back. I think the I think the right move is the elite guys all holding belts at the end of the night. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what's going to look cool on Dynamite. Everybody holding titles. And I, I hopefully, you know, Finn Juice, they lose, and then hopefully they stick around a while. I think they're a great tag team, and they've really elevated the tag team division, a, a division that's really thin right now that could use some more tag teams. Um, and I, I thought it was really cool that they took those belts to Japan or was able to wear them on uh, New Japan television mm -hmm. because, you know, the super, super hardcore fans, they love New Japan. And if they see Impact titles on New Japan, that's going to make them want to watch Impact more. So yeah. I, I think that's super cool. It legitimizes Impact more, right? Because, again, we still have the TNA yeah. stink sometimes. So I think having those guys walk around with those belts on, on a New Japan show helps them look cool, right? I agree. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Totally agree. All right, well, let's get into our next match. It's going to be the X Division Championship match. We got Ace Austin to visit, uh, defending his title against uh, Josh Alexander and uh, TJP. Who do you got in this match? The heart says Josh Alexander. The head says Ace Austin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, we, man, we agree a lot. Uh, <laughs> that's part of why our show works. That's why we have a podcast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. No. I, 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 I love Josh Alexander, and I would love to see him get a W here. I, but I'm predicting a couple title changes already, and Ace Austin just got the title, and I don't see them taking it off him anytime soon. He is a star in the making, and uh, me, I'm personally not a big fan of three-way matches. I, I think they're overdone, and I think it's a little bit lazy booking. Um, I do know the backstory behind this match, and we will talk about it on our Patreon. Um, that's the, that's going to be dropping if you go to fight game or patreon.com slash fight game media, our brace for impact show will be dropping on Friday morning and you'll be able to listen to that. But I do have a little bit of tidbits on how, how that all played out and why we're having a triple threat match. But, um, but despite all that, despite my disdain for triple threat matches, the talents involved in it, I think it's going to be an excellent match. Yeah, it'll be a great match. It's just like, it's so tropey to have an X division multi-man match. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's go ahead and run down just really quick the rest of the card. Let's do some quick hits. Uh, who you got, Diona Perrazzo uh, versus Tennille? Tennille um, Perrazzo. Yep, same. All right, tag team title match. We got Kira Hogan, uh, Fire and Flava versus uh, Jordan Grace, and then debuting uh, Rachel Ellering, who I thought looked great tonight. I'm going to go Grace and Ellering, but I'm not 100% sure based on Grace's contract status. Yeah, the, the contract status is kind of what, what is really making this whole thing iffy, but man, Ellering looked good in there. And I don't think you, you date I don't think you debut somebody like that and then have them lose their first match. So I'm all in with uh, Ellering and Grace. And uh lastly, we got oh no, there's two more matches. We got Trey Miguel, Sammy Callahan, and the last man standing match. Sammy Callahan. Uh, I'm gonna go Trey Miguel. Finally, we disagree. I I, I think that uh, Sammy Callahan does one thing well, and it's lose big matches. So <laughs> I, I think it's true. I, I, he, it's true, and and it's gonna be a garbage match, and and that's where he excels. And I really, 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 really enjoyed this feud, and I really enjoyed Trey Miguel's uh, training montage tonight on Impact. I thought that was very well done. Pro wrestling, more training montages. We need them. It's a lost art. The Rocky movies still rule to this day. So we we need more of those. Just um, like just like in Falcon and the Winter Soldier last week, more yeah. training montages all over the place. <clears throat> Absolutely, uh, and so now, lastly, uh, the last match we'll talk about is the eight man tag. Well, I think it's eight man. It looks like it's seven man tag right now, but we got Violent by Design with uh, Joe Doring, uh, Cody Deaner, and um, Rhino, and maybe Eric Young who tore his ACL and he's out six to nine months, uh, taking on James Storm, Chris Sabin. And um, uh, Eddie Edwards and Willie Mack. Who who do you got in that match? I'm going to go with our baby faces because I seem I think we're going to go heavy heels at the end of the show. So it, it makes sense to me to go with our uh, our impact stalwarts, if you will, mm -hmm. going going over right. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I I think and I think this actually opens up the show and yeah. uh, they they have it all crazy. It's a good way to open it. I'm curious to see how they replace Eric Young though. They haven't made any announcement yet because the story is still playing out. And so, um, he, you know, he, he injured his ACL a little over a month ago at the tapings, and he actually wrestled uh, Eddie Edwards on tonight's show with a torn ACL, which was, again, recorded about a month ago. So um, that's going to that's gonna be quite interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing who, who replaces him or even if he has a replacement. Myers Cardona, too, right? Did we miss that? Oh, one? yes, that's yeah. right. Yes, right. So uh, Brian Myers versus Mid Cardona. <laughs> I need to hear you say that. <laughs> 
we bury this feud every week. That yeah. every chance that we get. That being said, Brian Myers. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go mid Cardona. I, and I tell you why, because he looked really good against Sam McCallahan. He really impressed that was, me. That was a good match. Um, I don't know. I just feel like uh, I was listening to Brian Myers promo today, and I'm like, well, he made a lot of really good points. It really he, should be. It really should be he, Brian Myers. He 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 did. Except he said that he's not stuck in the past, and he's doing his ECW character. Uh, and his finishing move is the called the roster cut. So he's still living in Fair. getting fired by WWE. So his um, Ray, his Raven cosplay. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, um, well, you know, I think we got, we got a couple more things. So what, one of the things that I wanted to ask you, uh, JD is, you know, the last, I would say since slam anniversary of last year and then on to bound for glory and then hard to kill, we've had at least one, at least one surprise, right. one surprise appearance. Um, this is something that impact really likes to do. They they like to give you more, more than what you're looking for, right? Um, an unadvertised match and an unadvertised person. The last one to do it was when we saw Matt Cardona debut at Hard to Kill. So give give me something juicy, man. Who who do you think you could see making a surprise debut uh, this coming up Sunday night? Man, it's hard to guess. My if I'm a betting man, it's going to be in that opening eight man tag, right? Because there's the perfect mm-hmm. spot for it. I'm trying to think yeah. of uh, the former Cutler. Steve Cutler would seem to make sense in that group, but I don't know if he's going to be, I don't know if his he's 90 not, day is going to be up, but that him, him and that group makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, I can't, there just doesn't seem to be enough right timing. I mean, maybe, maybe we get some more Chris Harris stuff, you know, maybe mm-hmm. he comes back. I mean, like, I don't know. I can't, I'm having a hard time reading tea leaves on, on anybody showing up for this show. That's not yeah. supposed to like, I think if they do, it's going to be someone we, we just don't see coming. Yeah, no, and I didn't see Matt Cardona coming. It was just kind of like Ace Austin just showed up and made an open challenge, and the Matt Cardona came out and and they had a quick match. So I, I could see something like that happening. And the name that I there's two names that 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 I keep going back to that I keep tossing around in my head. And the first one um, that's really been in the news lately is Big Cass. I I I really could see you know something happening, and then all of a sudden Big Cass shows up. Maybe he makes a save somewhere or there's an open challenge and he shows up and answers it. And the, the next name is somebody that I fully expected to be in ring of honor by now, but we just haven't seen it yet. I I don't know when ring of honor tapes, but this guy's been available for a while and his old manager have been available for a while. They signed somewhere and you know, it would make a whole lot of sense to debut on the biggest pay-per-view in over a decade. And, and that's um, Manny Andrade, Andrade Cien Almas, uh, I, I, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I, that if I were a betting man, I wouldn't put money on it, but man, I, you know, he, there's been some signs pointing to that. So I, I would, I think that would be really cool. He would be a really good pickup. Cause I think they yeah. do need some more top stars. I do think ring of honor still makes more sense at the moment, but it's not throwing it out. Um, cast makes total sense. He's been doing the yeah. podcast rounds as of late. He's been on three or four different shows talking about him wanting to get back in. He's got that relationship with Gallows who kind of brought him back to wrestling. So it would make sense to me if they kind of bring him in and they kind of got a spot. Like I think he would, he's been trying to rebuild himself. So I could see him fitting in with violent by design who need another guy right now. Yeah. So, or, or, or just coming in as a baby face outside of that match. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think, you know, with his story, I think right now he fits better as a baby face. I agree. Uh, I, I, I agree. really do. Yeah. I so, that. yeah. So, hey, so one of the things is, is that we keep comparing this show to Lockdown 2008 with Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle. That show did 55,000 buys. I don't think we're going to get there on this. So what is your over under for um, pay-per-view buys? What was our last show? Do you remember off the top of your head? You know, they didn't really release the number, um, but they said it was the second biggest in Anthem history. It's such a hard thing to guess on. Yeah. I'm going to say under 30. Under 30? Okay. I, You know, man, there's so there's so much buzz for this, and they moved it to Sunday night, and they're, they're actually buying advertising, and they've been on every single podcast and every single radio show. And you know Kenny Omega is actually promoting this thing, and they got a lot of the MMA media involved. They did, man. man I, I I think that they could do over thirty. I don't think they're going to go over fifty. I don't I don't see that. I don't see that whatsoever. But I, I think they go over thirty, and it's probably going to be one of the most profitable pay per views the, the company's ever done. Maybe the most profitable because if you take a look at Lockdown two thousand eight, they had a lot of people making a lot of money on that show. 
That's and true. on this show, the only people making a lot of money are Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. Everybody else is kind of on baseline, you know, NXT level salaries and and lower. So um, I, I I think this could be the most successful show in company history if it gets over thirty thousand pay per view buys. That's true. Like the the entire pay structure is very very different now. So that changes a lot of things. I don't. Mm-hmm. If I think if they'd have pushed it harder on on Dynamite a little more because that AEW fan base is so loyal. I don't think you approach AEW numbers, but no. if they'd have pushed it a little bit more on the mainstream show, I think maybe you could have sniffed that fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. Maybe not get, maybe not get it, but sniffed it. Like if you're at forty two, that's I think sniffing fifty thousand. You know, yeah. but without it, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking between twenty seven and thirty. That's my that's what my gut's telling me. Yeah, I think that's a pretty reasonable thing. Um, you know, and I, I don't know when or if we'll ever get the real number. I think we're going to have to um, put the screws together and see if you can talk to Dave to get us that real number and, and feed it to us first. That way we can break that story. Yeah, uh, that'd be cool. <laughs> we, need, we need to break more news. That's how we got to grow this thing. We need to break news, which if that's all on you. I have no sources. <laughs> yeah, I, I I have no sources either. I, I have a friend who knows a guy. That's about it. So, <laughs> I know, so I know hey, everybody. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know a guy. Uh, well, hey, everybody, uh, this has been really fun. I'm really excited about uh, Rebellion that's coming up Sunday. You see the link on the screen. Go to patreon.com slash fightgamemedia. Check us out. Uh, Brace for Impact is our weekly show. I also do a weekly column on fightgamemedia.com called Brace for Impact of the same name. And uh, I kind of do a deep dive of Impact every week. I think that we're really the one of the only uh, media sources out there that is not a, a fan-hosted show. Right, that that is a completely unbiased show that does deep dives into impact this way. Most other shows, most other websites don't really go into impact the way that we do. And we 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 check out the show, we we talk about it every single week, we treat it with dignity and respect, and we actually enjoy the show and we make fun of the show and we just have a lot of fun doing it. So I'm really excited for you guys to come and check out uh, check us out on patreon.com slash fight game media. It's two ninety nine a month to get access to our show, but we also have an AEW Dynamite show with uh, Parker Klein and Paul Fontaine. We have the two Jabronis podcasts, and then uh, Garrett Gonzalez and John LaRocca, now of the Wrestling Observer. Um, you're, you'll get to hear them do some 1997 Raw reviews and some other retro stuff. Uh, $2.99 gets you in the door. You want to spend a few more bucks, you can get some MMA stuff. You get some boxing stuff. And uh, you know, every now and then we bring Dave Meltzer on and we do a Q and A with him. So we got a lot. We got a lot of stuff going on in the Fight Game Media uh, universe here, man. So everybody, check us out. I want you to like this video. I want you to share it with all your friends. Give us a subscribe, and uh, you know, dig into your couch cushions. Look for that pocket change. Throw two ninety nine down, and and hook us up with a subscription. All right. I feel like I'm on a show with Don West. What a pitch! <laughs> yeah, this Jeez, is the hard sell, baby. The hard sell. I'm gonna get in. I work for you. I work here. Like, yeah, this is, this is awesome. Well, you know, I think fi- I figure if I get enough subscriptions, then you know, Garrett will give us a raise. That's what I'm looking for. So that'd be great. I would, I would like that. Yes. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Hey, thanks a lot, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>